Hey guys, welcome back, and it's been a hot minute since we've talked about X-Men 97, and X-Men 97 is a very strange topic. So my initial concerns about it were the fact that it seemed to have a lot of activist-minded people involved, despite the fact that the showrunner himself had very much said that he wanted to stay true to the original series, that he didn't want to change things, and didn't want people working with him that were not on board with sticking with the source material. Now, this was an article from Geeks, uh, Geeks and Gamers here from 2022, so all the way back about a year and a half ago now, talking about how Bo DeMeo, who was the showrunner for X-Men 97, was basically attacked by the other people behind the scenes uh, on The Witcher, because when he was working on The Witcher, he very much felt like Henry Cavill was getting screwed over, like they weren't doing the story right, like they weren't doing justice to the original uh, source material, because there was this animus from the the writers and everyone else on set where they just didn't like the original story and so they were kind of like taking every chance they could to crap all over it. And then we had things where I reported on this for Fandom Pulse about how some of the people involved in X-Men 97, like J.P. Karlayek, very much as a vocal advocate of LGBTQ representation in basically every aspect of media you can find. And if you don't have a problem with that, that's your deal. But in reality, this goes beyond just saying we should have the right to work. This is, oh no, we need more representation, more characters, and those characters have to be voiced by 100% authentic LGBTQIA people. So basically destroys the very fabric of what voice acting is. It's your voice, it's not who you really are. You should be able to voice act for any character regardless of their orientation, gender, ethnicity. You are a voice. You're not a, <laughs> in that aspect, you're not a real person. You are a voice actor. Your personal life here, uh, history and experience makes no difference. So then we had this thing where a week before X-Men 97 came out, Bo DeMeo got fired. And this had everybody really confused. Like, what the heck just happened? You know, we have all this controversy, all these people worried about Morph being non-binary and where did Rogue's ass go? And is this going to be any good? Is this going to stay true to the original show? And then then we just hear that he's gone. He's fired. No disclosed reasons. No, nobody knows why. And then the rumors kind of start coming out that it has something to do with his OnlyFans account. And again, Bodomeo was never, he never shied away from the fact that he had one of these. It was just the fact that he was very upfront about the fact that, oh no, it's not like that. It's not explicit. It's just something where I post to my fans and we can communicate on there. And I think he posted like workout pictures or something. I don't know. I, can't, I wasn't about to go down that rabbit hole to find out what was on it. But people started believing that there was something more insidious behind the scenes. Maybe he was doing things in Hollywood that'll get you canned. I mean, not that they don't all do it, but he got caught or something. There are people assuming that maybe... It was the OnlyFans account. Maybe it was more explicit than people believed to, you know, to begin with. Um, very much, very confusing. And then what happened was really a lot weirder because the show came out, and from what I've heard from pretty much everybody who's watched it, episode one was great. Episode two is kind of a mixed bag where people didn't really like the direction the show took. But in general, people very much liked and, and really enjoyed at least the first episode of this new season of this show. So... The show seems like, okay, well, if the show's really good and there's no actual uh, proof of any criminal do, you know, misconduct on his part, what the heck's going on? So now we have this article from That Park Place talking about how uh, somebody in Marvel Animation, Brad Winderbaum, has rejected the claim that X-Men 97 showrunner Bo DeMero was fired. So it looks more like it was a mutual parting of ways, which just makes the entire situation that much weirder. So the article says, uh, earlier this month on March 12th, the Hollywood reporter Boris Kitt and Aaron Couch reported that DeMeo was fired and he will no longer be promoting the show or moving forward with future seasons. The reporting details that DeMeo's company email was shut down early last week and cast and crew for the series were notified he would no longer be working on the project. DeMeo also shut down his Instagram account. This is the thing right here, shutting down his Instagram that makes it look like was there messages correspondence back and forth with somebody maybe that he shouldn't have been communicating with like what's going on here uh the firing comes after DeMeo had reportedly completed writing a second season and was preparing a third in an interview with entertainment weekly winderbaum rejected the claim that DeMeo was fired first he praised DeMeo, saying i can't talk about the details but i can say that Bo had real respect and passion for these characters and wrote what i think are excellent scripts that really the rest of the team were able to draw inspiration from and to build this amazing show that's on screen Next, he specifically rejected the claim that DeMeo was fired. 
When asked if he could describe uh, DeMeo's departure of a, as a firing, Winderbaum responded, I don't. We parted ways. It's the best I could say. Winderbaum had previously praised DeMeo in an interview with Variety as well. He told the outlet he did excellent work writing seasons one and two, and I can't wait for fans to see the series. Uh, he added, the entire team came together to create a revival worthy of X-Men's 60-year legacy. From Stan and Jack to Claremont to the Lewalds, we all, are, we are all truly were standing on the shoulders of giants. As for what the plans are for the future of X-Men 97 following the first season, Winderbaum revealed, I've now seen versions of animatics for the entire second season. Um, he added, we're going to start development on the third season very soon, and yeah, we're trying to figure out who is going to be the voice on that page, but luckily that's going to come as a surprise. There's... Uh, there's many talented X-Men fans, excellent writers. So it's very weird. My thinking on this is, given the past history, given the fact that I guess the second episode of this season got a little politically dicey, given that there's like a uh, insurgency or an insurrection at like a Capitol building, a little too current year, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe Bodomeo didn't want things to get super political and he felt pressured to do it maybe he didn't like the direction they wanted him to push the characters because again if you think about his time on the witcher he was one of the people saying no we're not going to deviate from the source material we need to stick with the original story we need to honor the characters i could see this being rather than it being something where he did uh something very <laughs> very questionable or very scandalous Maybe it's just that simple. Maybe I mean, they've claimed that he's hard to work with before. They said the same thing about Henry Cavill on The Witcher. Maybe he just wanted to keep things as true and pure as he could, and he had too much pushback from the studio. I don't know. I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities. Let me know what you guys think about this, though. I think that there's a lot of uh, ways this could have gone, and I'm curious to see how this all shakes out. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys on the next one. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching the video. We do have two channels, one for daily uploads, the other one for more of my live streams and hot takes. Uh, links to both are down below, as well as the ability to join as a channel member for as little as $3 a month, and that'll greatly help us out. Much appreciated. We also have links to our Etsy accounts down below, as well as our website. We also have Locals and Subscribestar. If you didn't want to support us on YouTube, you can support us through those. Thanks again for being here, and we will see you on the next one.